Greetings, people of Earth and Sworn Nation. How are you? Welcome to Beer with Brian, a monthly program of Sworn Nation of the Sworn Club. I'm here. What's up? Late October. Phenomenal. Here comes everybody's Halloween celebrations this weekend, right? Are you ready? What are you doing? You know, we got set, we got Friday to party, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's crazy. What are you doing? I know that we have plans. Um, Beer with Brian is an informal conversation. There's not really any hard selling. I'm talking about matters of the day, things that are going on in pop culture from my perspective. But I also invite you guys and gals out there to answer, ask me questions about anything that's going on related to Coffin Comics. Um, so I know my immediate plans are to see a concert tonight. I'm actually going to go see Merciful Fate and Creator because I got to do what I got to do. And then I know tomorrow night and all weekend, the phenomenal George Romero classic Dawn of the Dead is playing in 3D at Regal Theaters across the country. And I know we're gonna go out and check out that wonderful, wonderful movie. That movie is just, uh, it. <laughs> either Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead, the original, have been my favorite movies for the majority of my life. Now, probably for the last 15 years, Night is a little above Dawn, but look, Dawn is an amazing film. If you haven't seen Dawn of the Dead, stop what you're doing, go see it in 3D. There are, I, what can I say about Dawn of the Dead? I just have so many feelings about it. Um, it's just an amazing film. I think I saw it when it came out. Originally, the first time around, I saw it in the drive-in, like on a Friday night. And it was great. But the next night, I went to go see it in the theater at a midnight movie screening. And that's when I feel like I really saw it. Because drive-in movie screens, let's be honest, they're kind of vague, right? And that second night... If you guys are familiar with the movie, very, very early on, this uh, SWAT guy shot, shoots someone's head off, and it's insane. It's like one of the, the most, to me, insane headshot on earth, on film, ever committed. And you guys and gals who believe Scanners is the one, I don't agree with you. I think it's completely Dawn. And when that happened in the movie, and that's like less than 10 minutes into the movie, that cleared out like a dozen people. It was a full house and about 12 people left and i all i could tell you is i could still remember my excitement because i was thinking like if this is how this movie begins how's this movie going to end i mean and it never ceases to it never ceases to deliver so whether you're a fan of night of the living dead or dawn of the dead they're really fun movies and they're fun movies to think about and there's so many like veins and tributary tributaries and arteries of where the story can go and there's a couple of fun Facebook groups that are fun to be part of because people are always pondering that kind of stuff. Um, and there are super deep track nerdy collectors. Like I could get so deep track and nerdy with you on things like Dawn of the Dead, but there are people who way, way outdo me. It's wonderful. Uh, I'll give you a small example. So during the movie, probably about a third of the way in, by now our heroes have controlled the mall. And, or they're gaining control of the mall. And they cut to a simple shot where it's an alarm. The name of the alarm is a is Big Bruiser. And I know all these dumb little details about this, but someone on one of the Dawn of the Dead groups went and tracked that thing down and has has a Big Bruiser alarm that they keep. You know, So crazy fun stuff like that. Anyway, Dawn of the Dead, 3D, this weekend, treat yourself. And then, of course, flipping over to Monday is the actual Halloween and part of how we're celebrating it with you is to have you submit your costumes for an online Halloween costume contest. So anything you wear, I don't know, in the past or, the, you know, here Friday, Saturday, just send it over. And we're going to have a judging and we're going to award a bunch of prizes and send stuff out to you. Like, you know, no, no purchase necessary. Just blast it out. So I can definitely pontificate and on and on and on. But if you have any questions, please feel free to just lay them on me. And while you gather your questions, I, the one thing I want to show you is the Hell Witch statue from Quarantine Studios has come in. And we are shipping them out. But please, look at this thing. Qu Quarantine Studios, their quality is remarkable. I'll, I'll probably see if I get a little more light on there. Yeah, just for now. The... The paint job is so subtle and wonderful and detailed. 
she is available um, with her top and as a variant, a very limited variant, I think, without her top. And but just feast your eyes on, you know, our wicked and wonderful creation. They just did such a remarkable job. It is a pleasure to work with these guys. And why I say it's a pleasure is not only are they artisans completely dedicated to their craft, they have great passion for what they do, and they have great passion for the coffin comic stuff. So of course it's wonderful to work. I mean, I am just amazed and humbled that the, we get to work with these guys. This talent is insane. So I'm sorry, soft sell, hard sell. You know, that, that statue was just so cool. I mean, imagine that character didn't even exist, what, five or eight years ago. And now here she is, she's in stories. Now she's statue action figure. It's amazing, so great. Okay, uh, Jimmy Coffin is letting me know there's a question. Uh, well, this one just uh, for a comment. Here's start off with comments Statement. here. We got Roger saying, "Hey, hey Roger. guys, hope all is well." It's great. great. Uh, Alex is watching you at the same time as watching Hooligan. Uh, okay. Double live streams. Double live stream. Okay, Brad is saying, "Please have someone do a Stranger Things Eddie homage cover." Oh, <laughs> someone should do that. You know what? I'll tell you what. We're doing it. We're doing it. That's right. We're doing it. So stay tuned for Coffin Comics Blackest Friday event on Friday, November 26th. There might be. Take a look. We'll see. <laughs> we got Scott No watching saying, hey. Hey, Scott. What's going on? Uh, oh, Bob Crowder is in the house. Bob, how are you? everyone what's Hello. up everybody uh, oh okay here's one where is it? okay so brandon, is brandon. It, speaking of costumes is yeah. ratso a brown or black rat where is ratso he's around here somewhere hang on i'll be right back <laughs> i think he's black ratso ratso himself that ratso is black man hey ratso <laughs> he said the panel is not very clear to him but he got it right here it's black there he is. Yeah, he's a black rat. You're going to learn more about Ratso. I'm actually uh, beginning work, well, continuing work on Mad Mike's story shortly. Actually putting finishing touches on a Captain Scargrave story. And then jumping back over to uh, um, Mike. Yeah, Alex is saying, uh, amazing how it's statue, and it looks even better closer up when we zoom in. Oh, it's so. remarkable. Yeah, so I mean, tis the season, right, everybody? Just really neat stuff going on. Um, really looking forward to seeing Merciful Fate. The surviving members have been assembled probably the first time in 23 years. Merciful Fate is the uh, original band for King, the artist King Diamond. And then another thrash classic is part of this. Actually, this is going to be a pretty good night. Uh, Creator. And then another band called Midnight. So it's going to be a, 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 a fun triple bill. Eric is asking, uh, hey, Brian, good to see you. Good How see you. did uh, El Presidente enjoy her birthday? El Presidente has really, really enjoyed her birthday, and the, the birthday celebration shall continue. So last night, it was very, very simple. Uh, we had a surprise, La Presidenta, with some flowers and a card, which is something I like to do. And then I actually brought some sushi home. Uh, which is exactly what Francisco wanted. So last night's celebration was quite simple, but the celebration shall continue. I mean, Francisco likes to have a birthday month, so it's not a birthday day, it's not a birthday week, it's a birthday month. <laughs> uh, that's it for questions right now, folks. Post your questions, and uh, while you have Brian's attention. Peace, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so other pontifications. Um, probably like a lot of folks out there, I like to watch a lot of shows, so... I saw a movie recently. I was very, very lucky. Myself, Francisca, and Nick G went to Detroit, Michigan and attended the wedding of Dan Mendoza and Nightmare Lynch. It was wonderful. It was a great weekend. There was a lot of food and uh, friendliness and camaraderie. We also then on Friday were able, were invited to go to Dan and Nightmare's home, which is uh, in a ro remote area. And I am just so pleased and happy that those guys are doing great. It was a real fun night as we went into the evening. You know, whiskey was poured. Um, someone drove their car into the backyard, opened up that rocking car stereo, had a bonfire. It was just fun. Now, on the way back on the flight, I watched a movie. 
The reason I watched this movie is I heard that Stephen King himself recommended it and said he wished he wrote it. So the movie is called Fall. I think you can see it on Amazon Prime, about 80, 85 minutes. And the premise is very simple, and I'll keep it simple. It's about two ladies who are climbers, and they decide to climb the tallest abandoned radio tower in America. So over 2,000 feet tall. As you know, something's probably going to happen. Um, if you have a fear of heights, this one isn't for you, but it's a real nail biter. I highly recommend this movie. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And then like in other movie stuff or TV stuff, I watched The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. I watched every season and I, I find it to be remarkable and really thought provoking. So it's on the fifth season. Last night was the eighth episode and it's intense. I mean, it's very entertaining, but it's brutal at times. And it just asks such brutal questions. Elizabeth Moss and the entire cast is amazing. I think it's uh, Bradley Whitford is one of the people for, representing sort of like uh, Gilead, which is kind of the villainous um, new country that took over uh, after America fell. And Bradley Whitford plays this very capricious character. You know, is he good or is he bad? And um, the, the show really delivers, I feel. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's super duper intense. So those are some. You know, I do talk about, so I think there, uh, Jimmy's pointing out possibly a question. Yeah. Well, first of all, we got Alex saying uh, excited about the Lady Death versus Zombie Tram. Can't Hell even yeah. imagine what the story's going to be like. We did, we did speak about that as well. Uh, Eric's asking the same thing. Speaking of Dan and Nightmare. Yeah. The Lady Death uh, Zombie Trap mashup next year, will it yeah. be a multi-book series or just a one-shot? It's going to be a one-shot, and it's up to Dan on the length, but he's talking anywhere from 48 to 64 pages, 60 pages, and we did speak about the plot. We went back into the back of the Still Ill Fulfillment Barn and talked story. Um, I think it's exactly what you kind of expect from us. You know, it's going to be uh, co-plotted by Dan and I, I'm definitely going to be uh, leaning towards Dan's sort of um, approach. And uh, I'm going to write Lady Death's dialogue. He's going to write Zombie Tramp's dialogue. And uh, I know who's, I, I can't say a lot more, but I know that Dan's pretty dedicated to this particular story. So it is coming next October, October 23. And I think we're all going to have a lot of fun with that. I mean, we're really just, remember, Still Ill is the publisher of record on that. And that's the first time I've done something like that. So we're actually just going into still ill world. And so I know we're doing a lady death body pillow, like everything that he does in his universe, we're kind of just like, we're just dipping into that universe and that whole style and that whole flair. Uh, Frank is asking, have you been watching bastard anime a show called bastard? Well, I've, uh, no, but I've heard of it. Where can I see bastard? I remember reading bastard, actually the, uh, the manga. Um, Bastard, Berserker is another one that kind of comes to mind. Yeah. But I liked Bastard, uh, the manga, a lot. Very intense, very epic in scope. Ray is saying he loves the glow in the dark covers. They're awesome, but he missed out. Hey, Ray, I know it's you. Yeah, this the whole opportunity to do glow in the dark was very recent. As you probably know more than anybody, Ray, that I've been doing glow in the dark since the 90s. But glow in the dark is usually done with offset based printing. That means higher print run because the unit cost is very high. Well, we work with a printer and they presented the opportunity to us very, very recently. And I'm talking as recently as like three weeks ago to do very low print run glow. And we decided to do it. So I know that the editions were limited. I know that they were expensive, but let me promise you this. The physical manufacturing cost of these very low print run glow in the darks is almost triple anything we've ever paid for a single unit cost. It's just high because it's it's unique, the idea of doing it in very, very low print runs. So I'm sorry to hear you missed. I know you're uh, Ray Glow, and I hope that you could find them uh, sometime in the near future. Frank's saying Netflix is where you can find that. Uh, okay, Net Bastard on Netflix. That sounds cool. I'll check it out for sure. Um, let's see, what other things, you know, okay, not everything is like, you know, horror, sci-fi all, all day, all night for me. So I also watch shows that are very much the opposite. 
um, just, you know, to keep your kind of mind clear or sometimes you just want to turn your brain off, right? Like everything doesn't have to be the same thing. So a couple types of categories that I really like is I love food tourism shows. So the cat, that category includes things like diners, drives and dives for Anthony Bourdain's no reservations. Um, but so, so in that domain, I'm always any Guy Fieri show that's food tourism, I'm into less the game shows and all that stuff, but just that. Um, but a show that I really like, it really catches me by surprise. It's on Netflix. It's called Somebody Feed Phil. So this is following, I think his name is Phil Rosenberg. And he was actually the co-creator of the show, Everybody Loves Raymond, which I've never seen personally. But this, this guy, Phil, that former executive producer, just literally travels the world, goes to a city, and eats at cool spots with cool people. And uh, I love food tourism. I, uh, people come together with food. It's amazing. So that's a fun show. So the other day, I just watched Philadelphia. So somebody feed Phil Philadelphia. And my God, I just wanted to retrace the guy's steps. Um, so I love food tourism. The other type of show I don't think you'd expect me to watch, but I do, and I love it, is Young Sheldon. So Young Sheldon is in its fifth or sixth season. I think it's amazing. I rarely saw Big Bang Theory, so I don't know much about it. But I just love this kind of classic sitcom that it tends to explore some issues, you know, among families. And it's set in the past. But, man, that's just a funny show. And the characters are amazing. We got uh, Tony saying hello from Mexico. Hey, hey, Tony. Hello. Uh, Dr. Hino419 saying, how are you doing, Mr. Polito? I'm great, Doc. How are you doing? Uh, Andrew agrees. He's a dude. I could watch shows about food trucks for hours. Yeah, that too. I mean, we'll probably like we watch um, the great food truck race, you know, that kind of. So it's food and competition. Very nice. Oh, another odd aside is, I, I mean, I don't mention this, but I mean, I've been a Howard Stern listener consistently since 1988. I'm a big Howard Stern fan. Huge, in fact. And then um, and it'd be, Howard's really inspiring. He's a character. And then, um, let's see, what other things you probably wouldn't imagine me to do? Howard's Howard's a big one. Yeah, those are some things. What else? Well, I, I love Chicago PD on NBC. It's just an amazing show. It's in its 10th season. Um, those are some shows I like that you may not imagine or associate me with. Well, Eric's asking, have you ever seen the uh, Curious Creations of Christine McConnell? It's a gothic-style cooking show filled with horror. No, but that sounds great. Where would I see something like that? I could enjoy something like that. I mean, oh, another thing, simply because I live with Francisca, and Francisca is an interior designer, and she, you know, she builds. Like, behind the scenes, whether you knew it or not, Francisca, and to a lesser degree, me, have been involved with, like, uh, buying, remaking, and selling about 10 houses, you know, through the years. And so we do like to watch those design shows, uh, for sure. It's really fun, very exciting. You know, especially as we're now we're working on expanding the coffin uh, footprint into the neighboring yard and expanding the crypt and the warehouse. It's a really fun time for that. And Eric says Netflix is where you can find that one. Thank you. Uh, Andrew's out. saying, well, do you ever have any chaos uh, Funko Pops? I don't, uh, well, I don't, I'm no, I'm not associated with chaos. So maybe you're talking about coffin. Um, I don't know. Um, I think, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, in the, in years past, we approached those guys, but it was a no from them and we just haven't, approached um so i don't know i don't, I don't know if an independent co a small cultish independent comics publisher is their bag and given that you know our stuff is kind of wild maybe not now of course funko makes pops that are associated with extreme violence you know guys characters like michael myers and chucky but with our stuff being a little on the sexy side that might be too dangerous because you know how everybody is about like you know sex Woo. <laughs> We got a couple minutes here before we wrap up. All right, cool. Questions in there. Hey, Ray is Ray Glow saying, uh, "Did you know that he's a chef, Brian?" Ray, I did not know that. That's awesome. My dad, my dad was a chef too, man. That is a that is a hard job. That is a hard working job, and my hats off to you. And uh, Scott's saying you should check out Ozark on Netflix. Oh yeah, so we're into Ozark. Uh, we're into the second season. So we're about two or three episodes into the second season, and we, we enjoy that one too. And uh, Tony's saying you guys should check out the new Guillermo del Toro. Cabinet of Curiosities. It is definitely on my list to check out. No doubt. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I just put up. Put up that, you know, probably like everybody, just catching up. There's so much interesting stuff to watch. So yeah, yeah. And uh, that's it for questions. We want to wrap it up, and we'll. Uh... 
Well, folks, I just want to say thank you so much for attending Beer with Brian for October Halloween. This is a program of the Coffin Comics Sworn Club. If you are not a Coffin Comics Sworn member, I highly recommend you join. Among the many benefits are a cool initial pack full of goodies that make you legit. And additionally, uh, one, the feedback people tell me one of the benefits are that Fiend Club or that Sworn Club members get a one hour advantage when it comes to uh, everything that we offer during our Friday promotions. So that's something for you to consider. So look, you guys have been great. I've been Brian Polito. Thank you so much for attending Beer with Brian, October 2022. Holler at you later.